So hello again, it's Classic David with yet another podcast and I'm here with Curtis who is Canadian living long years in Japan. Hello Curtis. Hi David. We are back with our regular podcast that we do uh, usually on two weeks basis, uh, usually on Mondays, which is, which is today. So today we are perfectly on time and we start always with updates of everything. So uh, a Bitcoin update, uh, you know, uh, 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 S&P 500 updates, gold, US dollar. Today we will exceptionally include some more exotic uh, fiat currencies such as Japanese yen and the uh, Canadian dollar. And after that, we're going to talk about, uh, Curtis has a lot to say about two very interesting stocks, Teladoc and Zoom, one of which we are currently using at the moment. <laughs> and um, and then uh, I also want to talk about Bitcoin Cash, because that's still, uh, I've noticed it's still an interesting topic to, to many of you. So uh, let's begin. So let's start with Bitcoin, maybe. Yeah, it looks like we had a breakout overnight in Japan. So I guess US during the daytime in the US, we finally broke out of this um, this wedge. People were calling it a bear pennant or a bull pennant. Nobody really knew. It was sort of a symmetrical pennant. Uh, we just looks like we broke out. Um, so we're at 47 here, 47,000 US dollars. Uh, the breakout level was about 45.5 or 46 to sort of break the technical um, upside there and become more bullish. And it looks like we've done that. We've been above the 46 for 24 hours, I believe, or mm -hmm. 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So it's very positive in, in the very short term. Um, we are now breaking out um, higher. So that's where we're at. Um, so some people are looking at the Fibonacci upside to the mid 50s, possibly mm -hmm. not financial advice. <laughs> None of this is financial advice. None of it's financial advice, not Our even mere opinions, anything. nothing, just opinions. Anyways, okay. that's where we're at. From my part, uh, this was a band trading. The band tradings are for those who spot it early. It's it's a heaven. It's a heaven for trading band trading because of course, it's, uh, you know, I did think I made a videos about it back in December. I thought there was going to be band trading between these two levels, but that only held like for one uh, one month. So that was uh, very short, but this mm -hmm. was way longer. So if you know, if there is a band trading and you can spot it soon before ahead of everybody else, that this is going to be a band trading, then you have a heaven. You, you can make so much money out of the band tradings, actually. Right. Um, uh, uh, as for uh, as for what current price action tells me, uh, I think in the super short term, of course, super short term is a nearly impossible. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, I need to grow up way more before I can. But uh, I would really bet uh, if I had to that there is going to be some pullback at the moment. Uh, there's going to be some pullback, in my opinion, some, somewhere from this cluster, because as you can see, there is quite a cluster that we've made in December even, and there is even a lot to the left side. So from this cluster, I would expect some pullback, but that pullback yeah. could be uh, somewhere maybe to that level. But that's just a super, super short term thinking. Right. And uh, as for what's going to be happening after that, then maybe it's better to wait first to see what exactly happens and then but. But yeah, but anyway, uh, anyway, yes, this is also connected to the uh, I have opened here the uh, Binance Futures, uh, Binance Futures uh, uh, funding fees, because Binance is, uh, you know, the largest exchange in the world. So their funding fees tell you a lot, uh, although I would love to have maybe use I would love to use more, maybe some aggregate of all, you know, funding fees from around the world, but I haven't found such a such good eyes I would ha I would have liked but what I want to tell you that over the past days there were quite few days where people were quite shorting so even yesterday when I was looking yesterday 24 hours ago when I saw this I was like oh my god this is so good this is so bullish oh my god so I was actually actually yesterday I was looking for what I was expecting this breakout so I'm really happy that it happened because yes it is it is important right and uh so that's perhaps all to Bitcoin for now <laughs> Maybe do we want to do Ethereum every time as well, Curtis? I do own some, but I'm not. It's not something I've followed, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much value I can provide. But I'm happy to talk about it. I do have an opinion. 
maybe we can briefly have a look at it because we're sure. coming if you want to lead on that I'm, i just haven't followed the historical price moves as much as bitcoin uh-huh um but um it because, seems to just follow right right now um uh, yeah uh well you know uh this is way beautiful more beautiful chart more than bullish, bitcoins. much more bullish yeah and yeah way yeah. more beautiful chart than bitcoins this is like oh my gosh and now a merge is approaching a merge is most likely going to happen in q1 in spite of everything that is happening of course it's still anybody's speculation when exactly there is still no announced date but the the search the google search uh in for uh, for ethereum merge is skyrocketing right. okay a huge expectancy of that right and with with this uh, with the merge happening if the merge happens in a like a like may or like really it's really short if it's announced then this chart tells me that it's absolutely not out of the question to uh, uh to i even new all-time high actually this chart right. is positioned for that like yeah hell. it looks good doesn't it yeah like hell um also you know it always you always check uh also when you are checking on any altcoin you check it on on bitcoin contract so it uh it btc that is also pristine that is like really really nice chart and it's just if you remember some of my videos from like two months ago i was so so much expecting back in december even 0 0.11 or 0 0.10 on Bitcoin contract and it never happened. We went down, but we held like champ. It, this is like, it's sort of an ascending wedge that is forming, but I mean, 0 0.10, it's just, in my right. opinion, it's, it's way, it's more than possible. Right. Yeah. So uh, now let's progress to S&P 500 or gold. What would you like? Um, but yeah, S&P probably is better. Okay. S&P 500. So I talk a so, lot uh... in the past minute. So. Yeah, so it's, but, I mean, a pretty good, pretty good bounce, right? Um, quite a good bounce. Uh, they uh -huh. found the bottom somehow. Um, uh huh. Wow. Basically, I think, in my opinion, it was that the Fed uh, kind of pulled back on its 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 hawkishness, and the the market responded well to that. Uh, probably, people are thinking the Russia Ukraine. A lot of that is already baked in. Yeah. Uh, in other words, there's we we the damage has been done. Uh, mm -hmm. From here, there's more chance of, of, you know, some sort of reduction in violence with an outlying risk. We can talk about that later of something really dumb being done by NATO or the US, like a false flag event. Uh, but otherwise, if you take that off the chart, um, you know, Russia has said that phase one of their military operation mm -hmm. is accomplished. So I don't know, you know, no one knows exactly what that means. Is that a head fake or are they legitimately just going to sort of control uh, the Black Sea and the East, uh, the Eastern provinces and then not attack Kiev? But it does seem that people have have um, maybe faded some of that risk. Mm -hmm. um, the other than that is a technical bounce. I think um, we mm -hmm. could have a lot more downside later in the year. Um, there's a lot of reasons why the U.S. would go into a recession next year. So it could be just a retracement and then we see uh, lower lows. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I already it was did. a healthy bounce. That's a pretty healthy, you know, uh, oh, recovery it there. It is, you um, know, uh, there was there is there was so much money you know, on the sidelines, lying on the sidelines, waiting for anything, for such a pullback. I already deleted my red circle. I apo oh, sorry. I apologize for that. I deleted it off camera. But if you remember, I had a red circle here. Yeah. Yeah, that was hit by this week only. I did expect that it was going to be close. So it's not like I won completely, although it was still pretty reasonably good call because I made it at the beginning of the year. I made right. it even before this, this drop. I made it somewhere in January, mid January or so. Mm. I don't even remember when exactly. However, uh, yeah, um, yeah, if you look on weekly, yeah, this look, uh, this look of course it's not gonna be easy to to break the the all-time highs no but, but it's not impossible anyway even from what i can see it's not impossible right. anyway to even break all-time highs in q2 that would be amazing it's not impossible in my opinion right and my quote-unquote magic chart which shows the uh, correlation between bitcoin and s p 500 that is even nicer this is like 
you know, it's it's very it's the most obvious formation that is forming. It's this triangular formation. That's it's it's kind of really obvious now that, that it's forming something like that. So this could be also go high, which means that Bitcoin is going to outperform the uh, S and P five hundred in the in the short term. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah. For now, and yeah, I completely agree with the Ukraine crisis that it's already priced in. The as it stands today, it's it's completely priced in. Of course, we don't know if there is not going to be dump escalation. Uh, that nobody knows, only the you know the superpower headquarters maybe. <laughs> so mm. we can only guess. Um, we can fear, of course. But uh, 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 yes, uh, it's it would be amazing, outstanding news if if April brings finally first uh, real de-escalation or some real move forward in a peace uh, uh, peace uh, 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 making deals, you know in the peace talks right the first deal is going to be made there that would be outstanding news for the whole world people would freaking start opening champagnes right okay uh gold it's still it's uh you know it's still gold sort of uh, up and down gold is moving slowly yes gold is a Very slow slowly gold, right? When you can again, <laughs> I mean, massive inflation, World War Three, and gold is still, <laughs> it still hasn't really broken 2011 all time highs. Yes, no, be okay. That's true. It might. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. I have to s switch to monthly chart. Okay, there we go. 2011 highs have been broken. Okay. Yeah, but not by much. <laughs> not by much, but not 2020 uh, highs. No, there yeah. wasn't. No. But as you just, I'm just said, joking that it's just everything's coming true for the bull, the 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 gold bugs, and, and it's still not not moving. But it, it, it probably will. I think it will. Yeah, yeah. I, I also, I think that the last time I made this this red line, and I told you like this is the level to freaking long. <laughs> So let's see if this comes true, if the view will hit this red line and then bounce to the new all time high. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. would be my call, actually. That would be my call. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, slow charge, so uh, that's uh, most of the time there is not going to be dramatic price section. Now, also, we can have a look every now and then on Bitcoin dominance. But Bitcoin dominance does like the small, slowest chart in the world, Curtis. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever looked at Bitcoin dominance. Yeah, I always have, yeah. But Bitcoin dominance, I have been so like, uh, 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 I've been calling for this red line, this far red line, 37.6%, right? right? I've been calling for it ever since September 2021. And mm -hmm. it... It, it 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 swing the other way, swung the other way. Then it made yet another lower low, yet another, and it held again. And now it seems like it's gonna be declining. So I've been calling for the same for like uh, nine months and still hasn't happened. So <laughs> like Bitcoin dominance is a chart that we should look at like once a year or once a uh, six months or so. Yeah. This is like so, so slow chart. Right. But it's, it can tell you, but it can still tell you something. I still stand by what I call uh, long term for Bitcoin dominance. And long term, what I call, and you are going to really like this, Curtis, I call for this red area in Bitcoin dominance. And you know what that's right. going to mean in the future? Higher prices. <laughs> uh, uh, surge in Bitcoin dominance means that, domi that Bitcoin is going to be outperforming altcoins a lot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, One yeah. day or another. It can be that Bitcoin will be surging uh, ahead of everything else, or it means that in the catastrophic uh, uh, market crash, everything will crash five times or okay, two times as much as Bitcoin. Right. Three times. Well, and we still haven't had a wipeout of the 15 to 20,000 coins other than Bitcoin, Ethereum, oh. and a few others, right? So when you, that wipeout happens, you will see Bitcoin dominance rise. Um, oh, yeah. When you look at CoinGecko, right now we have 13,429 yeah. so, uh, coins. You know, I think the top 100 coins probably have a shot. 
but the other 13,300 will be eliminated. And then that market cap will go to the winners and it'll go to the winners disproportionately like an 80, 20. So it'll go to Bitcoin, Ethereum in the top five, maybe. Um, there could be some other DeFi projects that get in there and other things, but um, generally speaking, it'll be Bitcoin dominance will will need to rise when that happens. So, but that's what the Bitcoin uh, person says. <laughs> well, no, but do you disagree that most of those thirteen thousand coins are going to die? Uh, mostly, most of those, perhaps yes, but I, yeah. I definitely don't disagree. Uh, don't agree that it's going to be just one top hundred. And I absolutely don't agree that they will go to Bitcoin most. I mean, yes, there has to be some period where they will, as I just told you that this is my call personal. But after that, once this area is hit, then inshallah, like, oh my God, like when you look at this chart, yeah. then we are talking about the, then we will talk later about it. I hope we still do podcasts. I just don't see, I still don't see any use cases for most of the coins at all. So I don't I'm see. So still, still waiting. And it's okay. waiting and waiting. And when you wait that long, you realize that there's no story there, right? It's just not, the, the frog is not going to dance. People told me this frog was going to dance. The frog's not going to dance, if you get my analogy. Uh, early, early days, early days. Yeah. Anyways, okay, next topic. Next, we've got, yeah, that was just, that was just a little, a little bit about the Bitcoin dominance. We will look at it in a couple of months. <laughs> That's sufficient. I'm waiting for those frogs to dance. Uh, dollar, dollar is uh, is something. Yeah, why ninety nine? Ooh, look at that. Okay, so we are in between my two lines. Uh, the monthly candle is about to be closed in three days. Mm. I am not sure if the my blue line is gonna be. Oh, actually, no. I was expecting monthly close on this around this red candle. But the right. weekly, we still haven't weekly made it to the blue line, but it's not that far. No, After it probably all, it will clear very... it. Yeah. I, I expect the fully reverse around this blue line. Oh, it, okay. I, in a, yeah, it, there's a I lot of reasons why it's going up lovers. further from here, but I don't know uh, in terms of a reversal. Um, I mean, I would say uh, in the near term, it's going to keep strengthening. Um, uh, just so you've got, obviously you've got um, U.S. interest rates are rising, which is mm -hmm. bullish for U.S. dollars, and then you've got mm -hmm. um, you've got a very risky world economy mm -hmm. that could go into recession. That's also bullish. Uh, you've got a shaky stock market, which people either go to cash, which is U.S. dollars, or they go to U.S. assets. So. The S and P becomes like a de facto risk off trade. If you're from Turkey or you're from Indonesia, you stop playing your local stock market. You'll go into the S and P. So you can have S and P rising a bit with U S dollar strength. So there's quite a few reasons why the U S dollar will remain strong this year, in my opinion. Um, so if if it's going to fall off the blue line, I would have to say, well, against what currency will it weaken? Right, because DXY ruble. would be all other currencies, right? Against the ruble, it'll it'll weaken against the ruble. But the ruble's not even in the, very much in the DXY, is it? It's only a, is it even in it? I don't know. I Let would expect. I don't know if the be. DXY basket um, is probably. Um, I'm looking it up here. Uh, it's no, the DXY is is euro. Swiss franc, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, British pound, and Swedish krona. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. I don't know why Sweden's in there. That's weird. But it's only so the ruble wouldn't affect it. Okay. What would okay. move? I mean, yeah. So that's all the DXY. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, that's. I'm surprised actually. I don't it's, know. Again, it's what it would fall. I don't know that. I just look. Well, you would at need to know that though, right? I mean, like. Um, so is the US dollar going to outperform the euro? Probably the yen, probably the British pound. Mm, I'm not sure. Canadian dollar, yes. Swedish krona, yes. Swiss franc, I don't know. Mm. Um, so I didn't realize that. I thought DXY was against like 20 or 30 currencies. I also but thought not. so. Yeah. So based on that, I'm even more bullish that DXY is going to rise just because there's so many reasons why the US dollar would be the risk off choice. And then you've got interest rates rising, right? 
we shall see. Although yeah. I just look at the chart and I'm just my call based of the chart. I don't know against what uh, currencies it could uh, down, uh, uh, not perform, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm just based on the chart. I am expecting reversal around this area and we are approaching it pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And that reversal is going to be nasty. This is going to be something like what's happening since since March 2020. Yeah, I the personally would of need more of a reason than just the chart personally, but um, okay. yeah, um, you know, actually it's a good time. If you want to go to the yen versus the, the and, uh, USD. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's probably a, a good time to go to that. We have a new, uh, we have a new currencies that we want to talk to you about. Right. So, so, so. right. For your listeners, I mean, the yen has historically been a risk off currency. In other words, whenever the uh, the world economy got weak or stocks got weak, uh, the yen would go up. Um, and there's various reasons for that. It was called the carry trade. It would basically be Japanese investors repatriating their money back to the yen. So they're selling US stocks, buying yen and bringing it back, uh, not physically, but bringing it back or parking it, let's just say back in the yen. And that was a trade for about 20 years there. Uh, what they called the carry trade, which is borrow Japanese investors or others borrowing in yen, buying risk assets when things are good, when times are good, and then selling back when times are bad. So, so what's interesting here is you're seeing the U.S. dollar strengthen, even though the um, S and P is 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 a bit um, wobbly. Um, so what that's showing, you can see how it's jumped in the last two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. in the last week, massive. Is, is because of the Fed saying they're going to raise interest rates, even if it's slow. Uh, they put it at 0.25, maybe another 0.25, maybe another 0.25. But the Japanese government said they're not raising rates. So the, the rate on Japanese bonds is still almost zero and it's going to stay there. Okay. So that's why you saw that spike. Well, it's one reason. The other reason would be uh, still the war in Ukraine and, and general market uncertainty and a risk off sentiment. Um, but historically, the, the yen would outperform the U.S. dollar in risk off. Here, we're not seeing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all. And if you look at the Canadian dollar versus the yen, my next slide, it's the yeah. same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the same spike. The Canadian dollar tends to follow the U.S. dollar when it comes to interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. Because Canada is a major trading partner with the U.S., about 80% of our goods are sold to the US. Wow. We can't afford we can't afford to have a too much uh let's say Canadian dollar strength because it affects our exports. Does that make sense? If the Canadian dollar is too strong versus the US dollar, then Canadian products become too expensive relative to other goods and it affects our economy. So it tends to move with the US dollar as much as possible, at least when it comes to policy. Um yeah. So, so long, long answer there, but um, the Canadian dollar will probably move with the, the US dollar if it can on rates. Um, the yen is going to stay weaker if they don't raise rates here, which it looks like they're not going to. So, okay. So that was about, that was the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen, right? Yeah, I think and we can actually move to our exotic topic. So that is stocks. <laughs> we haven't done that yet. And yeah. Curtis has a lot to say about uh, I cared. I don't care that much about the stocks. I care about S&P 500 right. because it's correlated, but I haven't been right. in stocks ever. Right. So that's a Curtis. Okay. Yeah. So again, help. the caveat is this is not financial advice. Um, currently, I don't own these two stocks either. So I'm not trying to pump my bags. So to so, speak. Okay. So I don't own Teladoc. I don't own Zoom. Um, the reason I wanted to present them was just to keep the channel interesting for your audience. Um, if you do have some junior investors there that are interested in stocks, um, you know, evaluating a stock um, has some of the same principles as evaluating any investment. So some of these skills are transferable. Um, some of them are, are unique to, to stocks. Uh, but the thought process, I think, is, is interesting. And so I thought I would just cover two stocks today, um, Teladoc and Zoom. They're both considered tech stocks. Um, I owned Teladoc for, uh, from maybe 2018 to 2021, uh, but fortunately I sold before it crashed. 
Um, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting. Tech stocks do perform somewhat in relation to Bitcoin. In other words, their uh, tech stocks tend to be growth stocks with higher risk and reward. Uh, they have higher multiples and therefore more risky investors, risk-focused investors. And so in a way, there's some interest for crypto investors to at least understand tech stocks. Um, so uh, let's look at it. Um, we'll start with Teladoc. Um, the ticker is uh, TDOC, if you want to look on the S&P. Um, Teladoc was one of these big, uh, we can go there if you want, uh, but I'll come to the chart later. But if you want to go to TDOC, uh, TDOC, okay, all right, all right. Uh, TDOC. But I'm not yet. Yeah. See? Yeah, but we can Teladoc just, yeah. Health. Uh -huh. yeah. So we'll come to this chart in a bit, but let's go back to that screen, the first one. Yes. Uh, I'm going. Just the, I'll do a quick company introduction. Uh -huh. Um, another reason I chose Teladoc and Zoom is they're both uh, tech stocks. They're both also market leaders in their in their uh, specialty. And I'd like to just talk about what that means to be a market leader and how those tend to continue to be the winners, right? You know, you've got Apple that won in, in phones, Amazon run in retail, Google won in search, and that we have these examples of, of the winner winning and exponentially taking off. Um, I, I believe that's a truism that does happen in tech because of network effects and just general economies of scale that, especially in tech, the winners win more and more and more. So I thought uh, Zoom and Teladoc are both market leaders in tech, so they have a lot in common. So I thought this would be a useful takeaway for your audience to think about this when evaluating other companies as well. Okay, so uh, lots of talking here, but Teladoc is a... Uh, what you'd call virtual or outpatient medical solution. So it's basically a way to have medical advice given by a doctor from home. So essentially a Zoom call with your doctor is what Teladoc provides. Uh, but they have a technology platform that allows you, uh, people to get medical advice or have a uh, meeting with a doctor through their computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they became super hyped uh, when COVID broke out. Even Donald Trump mentioned Teladoc <laughs> live. Um, and there was another thing where they relaxed the... So in America, you have the different states. Uh, because of COVID, um, they dropped some of the rules about someone using the service across state laws. So uh, <laughs> state lines, rather. So there, uh, the government even opened up some of the rules about being able to, like if I'm in Florida, to be able to call a doctor in Texas or something like that. So COVID was such a big panic for them that they, they really pumped this kind of uh, technology. And probably that's going to continue. Um, similar to Zoom, right? Zoom benefited greatly from COVID. So mm -hmm. That's another similarity between Teladoc and Zoom. So, so Teladoc, um, they're uh, the market leader, quite large. If you go to the next slide, um, we can look at um, them being a market leader. Uh, also, their revenue, they're making a lot of money. So this is from February 22nd, 2022. Fourth quarter revenue grew 45% year over year, $550 million. Uh, visits increased 41% to 4.4 million. Uh, full year growth was 86%. Uh, cash flow grew. Um, average billing per person grew, I believe. So um, Teladoc's numbers are, are great. They are the market leader. The next largest competitor is about, uh, well, it's a much smaller competitor. Um, and their growth is, is near exponential um, in many ways, uh, year on year. So they're very wow. strong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go to the next slide. So this is the chart. So you can see they had a great run up from 2017 to the peak in 2021. Hmm. Uh, I think they hit about 290 or $300. It looks like it about, oh yeah, almost 300. Okay. Yeah, almost. okay. And then they've fallen off. Now they're at $66 as of today, uh, March, end of March, 2022. So what is that? Is that a 70% fall? It's quite. Something yes. like that. More. Let's do the math. Let's say it's 280. We can have a look at the chart. 66. Yeah, it's about 80%. Exactly. What's, what's the retracement there? 
83% to the bottom 83%. and 78% to where we are at the very moment. Okay. And then it's even, so not only that, it's below what it was in 2018 August, right? Uh -huh. We're just about at that level. If you uh -huh. go back to August uh -huh. of 2018. That's here. Yeah. So we're even it's below. below mm -hmm. So it's not just that we, we were traced from that big pump up, but effectively it's three and a half years later, it's valued less than it was three and a half years ago. And then going back to my previous slide, they've had massive growth since then, right? Uh, they've had year on the mm -hmm. year and year growth is, is amazing. So, so you're getting the stock for the same price as three and a half years ago, pre COVID. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, on a technical level, as well as a historical earnings level, you're getting uh, perhaps a good buying opportunity, not financial advice. Okay. Let's jump ahead to my final slide with Teladoc. So here you've got the stock price we looked at, right? The top one there, it's fallen down to 2018 levels. Yeah. Uh, the middle one with the bars, the blue bars is this, the sales per share. So it takes the share, the number of shares, sorry, the, the share price, the revenue divided by the share price. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe that that's what it is, right? Uh, is that true? I believe so. That yes. Yeah. So you can see um, sales are up. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it could be the number of shares issued so that may account for new share issuance. In any case, you could look okay. at that as just revenue progress, sales growth. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom one is the ratio price to sales ratio. So it's at an all time low. The price oh. to sales ratio is the same as it was in 2016. Right. So it's the price of the share divided by the its revenue, effectively. Yes. Yes. Right. So all three charts are saying you should buy this. Um, could it go lower? Yes. It kind. Of, if you go back one slide, it looks like it's kind of bottomed um, in the short term. Um, but um, obviously, uh, you know, another stock market pullback, uh, wider stock market pullback would would hurt it. Yeah, um, but it goes to show how much of a discount you can get on a tech stock. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to Zoom. Let's do the same walkthrough with Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone knows Zoom. We're using it now, so it's what Skype should have been, right? It's teleconferencing. Um, they have free versions as well as corporate versions that are more expensive. Uh, but they've they're a market leader. They've gained a massive market share, um, and they're starting to monetize and bring out new products. Yeah, I can um, again COVID massive COVID benefit, work from home benefit. Um, I, if you go to the next slide, uh, what do I have here? Competitors, they do have competitors. They have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Google has products like Google Chat. I don't think it's as good. Mm -hmm. um, there's Cisco products for corporations. There's others go to, but Zoom seems to be the winner. Okay, and again, these things tend to when it's a network effect, they tend to accelerate their winning, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so similar to Teladoc, they're a market leader that's growing. We can go to the next slide. Um, stock price oh, is at God. a low, right? Uh, earnings per share is at a high, and the price earning ratio is the best it's been for several years, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, um, if you go yeah, if you go to the yeah, it's not so far back. It's it's a newer company. If you go to the the, do you have a stock chart? Next one. Once again, look, we're lower than we were. Wait a second. This is still Teladoc. This is still still Teladoc. Oh, sorry, sorry. This was still I believe it's a similar so... chart though. Video communications. You want, I think you want, you want <laughs> ZM, I think ZM. Got it. So look, very similar to the Teladoc. We're at levels prior to COVID hitting 80 percent down mm -hmm. yeah 80 percent down and it's still it's growing uh revenue is up wow i think there's one more slide there yeah that should be it uh there's that one um but is, is there one more there's not one more there i think there's something in there yeah there, oh, we, go. there, there we go so uh th so this is from november 2021 uh, you can see revenue is up 35%. Wow. Uh, the number of customers <laughs> growing. So they're, you know, they have a lot of free customers, but they monetize them, right? And 94% in 
increase of monetizing customers, customers contributing more than $100,000. Um, margin is increasing at, at 40, non-GAAP margin, 40%. So some really great numbers. So the, again, you can see the parallels here. You've got a stock that's a market leader, growing fast, network effect, uh, winner take all in tech, and the price is off 80%. Um, whereas a year ago, people were willing to pay five times for the same stock. Now, no one wants to buy it at an 80% discount. So interesting stuff. How can the market not see that? <laughs> wow. Well, clearly, you How and I are smarter possible. than everyone else, How? right? <laughs> of course, that's kind really, of obvious. We're just really smart. It's kind of obvious. It shows, it shows on how large audience. <laughs> so, um, could what's that? Yeah, so, right. That's, continue. That's why we, that's why we hit a million subscribers last that's week. That's why we, yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's just interesting, right? I mean, even myself, uh, David, like I should be buying these. I don't own these right now. So what am I waiting for? Right. Confirmation, I think. Well, fear is a big fear is a problem, you know, like we there's a good chance the US goes into a recession in 12 months. So what happens to these stocks? Have they bottomed or do they go down more? Um, they're definitely they definitely look like a good deal. If you hold them for five years, they look like an amazing deal. Mm -hmm. Right. So if their market share keeps growing and, and their growth keeps growing, uh, the prices are going to be higher in, in three to five years. But are you going to wait for that? Yeah. Um, anyways, not financial advice, but I thought that would be a useful analysis for your, for your listeners. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, last but not least, I would like to cover an altcoin, every podcast one, or at least talk about a little bit. And uh, I have picked Bitcoin cash because uh, I made a Bitcoin cash video the last week and that was quite yep. a discussion. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about Bitcoin cash? Let me go. Yes. Yeah. Bitcoin Cash is one of the altcoins I can talk about quite a bit because I followed it quite a bit when there was the fork, when it originally came out and, and what happened in 2017 and Roger Veer and, and all of that. So I was around for that entire drama and mm -hmm. I had an opinion on it and, and I was right there. So, I mean, I could talk about it a lot. I'll let you lead. Um, I own a little bit of Bitcoin Cash and I'm not against it. Um, I had an opinion back in the day, but uh, I'll let you start and maybe I can jump in later. Yeah, basically it's what I've said in my video, uh, like Bitcoin Cash, the narrative seems, I don't, I also don't agree with Segwit, I also don't, uh, don't like what it does. I do think that uh, Bitcoin is now the tool for spying uh, and I think it, it was deliberately pushed, the uh, Segwit. It was not a natural development. It was an involvement infiltration even by uh, by the state agencies. I'm uh, I'm convinced all of this is true, uh, uh, but uh, I think and also I can see the reasoning behind Bitcoin Cash that why some community wanted to split to keep Bitcoin project alive. That the way they saw it, that it was right to do it. But to fork like this, I think that that's, gen that's uh, overall, it's always going to be proven that this was an absolute disastrous misstep, I think. Right. Uh, I think that the right thing for to do, do here in 2017, when, when uh, Segwit was being introduced, implemented, I think that the right thing for to do for all of those that didn't agree was to just basically abandon Bitcoin. Like bit, abandon Bitcoin project, just say that, okay, this is where you're taking it. I'm going to find another project that I like. And there are- right, You're saying rather than form, form, form Bitcoin Cash was yes. just to go to Ethereum Most or something else or whatever else, whatever else. Oh, something else. Yes. Something else that they liked. I think that was the- Interesting. Okay. Thing. That's an interesting uh, angle. Yeah. I think that the whole Bitcoin Cash's success was all about taking the brand. I think when it didn't happen right. here, I mm. think it's never going to happen now. I think it's too late. Every single year it was less and, and lesser chance. There was one fork of Bitcoin Cash here. There was another fork of Bitcoin Cash here. So it already forked twice, formed another like BSV. Yeah. And then the the X Cash or whatever it's called now, uh, the Amorisa Shed. 
um, yeah. this shit coin. So that's that's another disaster for a Bitcoin right. Cash project. Overall, I said on the video and I stand by it. Uh, if you see Bitcoin Cash, if you hold some Bitcoin Cash, if you see this blue area to be hit, it's the area from 480, um, 470 to 580. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you're going to get a better deal, actually. And right. What's that? 0. 0.8. It's at less than 1% the value of Bitcoin. It's I have it at 0. 0.00. So 0. Yeah. 0.08. Bitcoin so cash eight, on eight, Bitcoin. Eight, yeah. Which on is Bitcoin. almost an all-time low, right? I think it hit seven, but it's hit eight. Yeah. The all-time low was seven, right? All-time was low was seven for now. Yeah. For now. Before yeah. we break further down. But now it looks like we are we are having a reaction. No, I like I like what you said there. I like that you said you kind of were balanced. You might have said there was you know there was some games played on both sides, uh, but perhaps the best move was for the 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 Bitcoin Cash people to join another coin rather than try and fight directly with Bitcoin, which they clearly lost the fight, <laughs> and, um, think... and that it might have been better to do it the other way. Um, That's going to be the lesson I think for everybody yeah. as well. At the end, yeah, there are still. People I mean, Roger Veer, it. Roger Veer, no doubt, is a very smart man who was one of the original guys in Bitcoin, and he mm -hmm. tells everyone about that, and maybe a bit too much, but but he made a lot of mistakes, I think, with the project. Um, it probably was a long shot, even if he didn't make those mistakes. But you know, the 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 aggressiveness and his his interpersonal skills were horrible. Uh, he alienated the Bitcoin, but equally you could say Bitcoin maximalists alienate people. So I'm not saying yeah, he's the only war. one. It was a war, literally. But he was going up against a stronger group and alienating them simultaneously was that's basic, um, you know, um, what is that? The 48 Laws of Power, that book, you know, he broke all those rules um, in a bad way. And then allying with Craig Wright was obviously a dumb move with BSV. He got backstabbed there. And then this engineer they've got, who is also quite selfish. What's his name? Who just broke off Amor again? Is a shit. Yeah. So, I mean, it was um, it was backstabbers, backstabbing backstabbers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's unfortunate. You know, look, um, I don't want people to lose money, and and it's, I would. Uh, there probably is room for more than one coin and all that, but it's tough now, right? And one more metric that I uh, want to talk to talk about to people. This is the metric. This is on-chain data, uh, and this is this is the value sent through the network. And this was one of the most important uh, charts for Bitcoin Cash because it was frankly quite the only thing that spoke for it over the past year. Right. Or so. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it, this, this is the green line is Bitcoin Cash. The uh, pink is Zcash, which is another fork of Bitcoin, by the way. Right. This is the red line is Ethereum, blue line is BDC, obviously. And uh, the Bitcoin Cash, ever since the Amorisa Shed uh, fork, there was an explosion in the value sent over the network. But the equally, it went skyrocketed up and it was higher than Ethereum's, the, the network sent, the value sent right. over the network. It equally plummeted recently. It plummeted. Now why? And that's exactly that's anybody's guess. And what my guess is that all of this was just a manipulation of few whales who just wanted Ooh. to make this look good and Ooh. were circling the coins, in my opinion. That's interesting. I think there was a lot of that involved. I'm not sure if it was all of it or there was a combination of some noise.cash. Uh, there were comments. accusations of that against BCH even from 2018, but they denied it and called BTC people maximalists. and. There was a lot of pushback that it, it, that what like you said that was the main reason BCH was going to beat BTC was it was cheaper and people were actually using it. Um, yeah, yeah, and now you can to say see that that was a lie is really incriminating. If that was a lie. Then you just I'm telling you guys if you're in Bitcoin Cash, I mean I'm sorry, well, not but only you that, don't they, take they, this chance. Yeah. Well, not only that, David. If they did lie, they basically put gave people false hope who then bet on it and maybe lost some money, right? And then they did the same that they declared the war in two. Like they then did the same like BTC, like then they are not ashamed to to use, you know, market manipulation to, you know, then they, why should they be better? BTC? Well, it's better because the BT value has held. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, I'm just saying <laughs> that if they also use some kind of manipulation yeah. of the on-chain data just to look good and just to, you know, push the propaganda, like we are exploding, 
if they use that, then yeah. you know, why? Yeah. Pre, like fundamentally, it's it's the same that they're they're accusing the BTC of. Fair right? enough. Fair enough. Yeah, that's and a fair point. Yeah. This is now we are at hundred million. The the. So now the, let's talk about Ethereum faking lies. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the next uh the next ethereum podcast. doesn't only lie about the pumping but they lie about the technology and when they're going to release projects and and they roll back chains and they change the rules so if we're going to talk <laughs> they next, make BT, they make bitcoin look podcast. like angels yeah next podcast next, okay, next podcast that, i think yeah. ethereum goes i think vitalik goes to jail for 100 years roger veer goes to jail for 30 years and the maximus go to jail for 10 years <laughs> I wouldn't be so harsh on Vitalik. They all go to jail. Still, they all go to jail. They all go to jail. I just wanted to finish that the, the Bitcoin cash is at 100 million sent over a uh, uh, 100 million value sent over network. And it was just a few months ago, it was at 6 billion. 6 billion. And now they're That's at impossible. 100 million. How How's big that? of a job is that? 98%. 98% of the value sent over Bitcoin Cash Network just evaporated. Has anyone tried to explain that? If you just want to ignore this. May, uh, but I has mean, anyone in BCH explained that? I'm not sure. I'm not that much uh, listening. Wouldn't that be the number one question? Industry, Wouldn't but... that be the number one question they would be asked? It went down 99% in, in uh, six months? In, uh, in less than that. It's from the so December no one has asked that one, question? two, three, four. No one has months. asked that question. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. That would be like uh, Tesla sales going down maybe, to five cars and no one bring that up in the shareholders meeting. <laughs> maybe you can say that it, the, the metric is wrong. So let me just very quickly find additional uh, on chain data source. Yeah, just to check. Just give me a, you can, you can uh, talk about the Bitcoin cash in the meanwhile before I find it, if you want to. You want me to talk about it? Well, no, I, I, I actually went to, went to a, I went to a Bitcoin cash meetup about two months ago. I, I just was curious and went and, and yeah, it was pretty low energy, pretty low mood. A um, lot of nice people. I don't, I don't have any problem with groups of people having their own opinions and disagreeing with me. It, it was fine. But um, one comment was one of the guys said they should have tried to steal the name. They should have tried to steal the, the logo you know essentially there was no room for two bitcoins and when they didn't try to steal the name that that was their failure but i don't think that was possible in the first place but um you know the exchanges were the ones that decided who would get the ticker right and they went they went with the the richer people right which were the the maxis i guess but it seemed like um they were unable to to convince them that this is the real bitcoin and I think the battle was lost the minute that happened, but um, that's my two cents. Okay, so I dug up this one. Uh, let me show it. Uh, this is, however, adjusted. This is transactions, uh, transaction value adjusted in US dollars. And you know, let me, and in here, Bitcoin Cash has gone from about 3.3 .3 billion in May, also to like 52 million. I would like to see a raw, like this is some after their adjustments that they they filter some no, uh, uh, noise, but they, they, they decide what the noise is so they can manipulate it as well here in the uh, coin metrics. But unfortunately, uh, I'm unable to use the raw data. I only can right. see the, the extra answer that they're, they're hiding that behind a paywall. But it's, it's again, it's the same that you can see some significant decline. And it's also when you look at the native units, yeah, native units is a good call as well. Native units, this is, this is in the number of coins, right? So this is number of Bitcoins that have been transferred. So there have been like 3 million Bitcoin cash transferred, I think daily in May, 2021 right. or or there have been 1.86 mi uh, million of them transferred in oh. in january and right now there is like 180,000 of them so it's a show significant decline there is some absolutely like dying like i'm, I'm right. sorry guys and even if i'm wrong even if all of these uh, on-chain data are wrong even if there is some heavy manipulation which there can be always even in that case it's just you can't deny 
that Bitcoin Cash had years to take the Bitcoin brand and it didn't. Right. I mean, yes, in the community, community can be say, can be saying that this is the true Bitcoin, but it's just in right. their closed cultic community. It didn't take it and it has resulted to be only yet another Bitcoin fork. Yeah. Yet another Bitcoin fork that is cheap. How many of them have do we have? Many, many beyond the count. Right, right, right. Even Zcash is as cheap as Bitcoin Cash. All right, so that's everything from me. Do you want to add anything before we wrap up? Maybe the breakout has to do with Janet Yellen. So she, did you hear that she became Bitcoin po or crypto positive recently? Uh-uh, I didn't. Okay, ja that was huge news about three days ago. Janet Yellen, who was the Fed chairperson before, uh, before Jerome Powell. Oh my God, um, well, they're not gonna ban Bitcoin now. <laughs> No, she said she the the language she used was extremely positive. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at that Janet Yellen um, and that she's, you know, they're saying they're going to be constructive on it and that many investors hold it and it's important. She used all these buzzwords that were very, very strong, whereas about a year and a half, two years ago, she had been quite negative about it. So, I mean, the US market is the key market. It's where all the money is, right? Like something like 20 percent at the moment. Yeah, and next uh, one, I'd like to cover Tesla as well and sort of mm -hmm. contrast that with um, the Zoom and Teladoc. And I will bring um, you some interesting altcoin again the next time. A lot yeah, great. looking forward. So looking forward and see you in two weeks. Thank you very much, Curtis. Thanks, David. And to everybody, every one of you have a nice day. Mm -hmm.